In this lecture, we are going to cover the definition of risk. An important thing to remember about a risk is that it's a probability of getting either a disease or a health outcome, and that it's for a population and not an individual. The learning objectives for this segment are as follows. Define and calculate the measure of risk, choose the measure of risk for the appropriate situation, and interpret risk within the context of public health research. But let's first note, risk is a common word with a broader meaning. For this course, we will have a very specific definition. The numerator for a risk are incident or new cases. These are new cases that are identified during the study follow-up. The denominator is the study population at risk of getting the disease or health outcome at the beginning of follow-up. So the formula looks like this. It's number of incident or new cases divided by the total number of at-risk individuals. Risk measures the number of new or incident cases of the health outcome that develop among people and the population at risk over a specified time period. Risk refers to the probability that a health outcome will occur. Risk can be expressed as a proportion and ranges from zero to 100%. You may be wondering why we use the risk as a measure. We use risk as a measure for several reasons. First, it's fairly easy to calculate and interpret. It also has clear meaning to clinicians and lay people. And patients understand basic percentages. So let's go through an example. Risk can be used to make various health decisions, both at a population and individual level. At an individual level, risk can be used to help patients decide whether to accept a drug intervention. Note there's the caveat that this risk estimate is not specifically for that individual, but for a population. For example, alendronate medication, a specific inhibitor of osteoclast-mediated bone reabsorption, can increase bone mineral density, or BMD, and prevent radiographically defined vertebral fractures. This figure is from a study that examined radiographs of women who received alendronate versus a placebo group. The figure shows the risk of hip fractures in placebo and treatment groups over the time. It shows new cases of hip fractures developing during the 36-month time period. In the three-year study, fractures of the hip occurred in 22, or 2.2%, 2 .2 of 1,005 patients on the placebo and 11, or 1.1%, 1 .1 of 1,022 patients on the alendronate sodium, which is commonly known as Fosamax. The figure displays the risk of hip fractures in this study. When calculating risk, we generally assume that the entire population at risk at the beginning of the study period has been followed to determine who develops the health outcome of interest. A closed study population means no new individuals are entering the study once the study has started, so no individuals could join halfway through the study, for example. In a closed study population, people in the study do not leave or enter the population due to birth, death, migration, loss to follow-up, etc. Next, we will discuss how a risk is actually calculated. In order to calculate risk, we must define our study population or the population at risk. And then we determine the number of incidents or new cases of the health outcome or disease. Next, we specify the time period. So, this is what the formula looks like. Risk is the number of new cases of the health outcome divided by the population at risk during a specified time period. So let's try an example calculation. Here we have 11,000 people that were in an area around a large nuclear power plant, and they were followed for seven years, or until the development of any cancer of the blood. 30 cases were identified over the seven-year period. What is the risk of developing the outcome of interest? So in this case, we take the numerator as 30 new cases, and we divide it by 
the population at risk, which is given to us as 11,000. And then we calculate the risk as 0.0027 or 0.27%. Then we can convert this to a more easily understood statistic by multiplying by 1,000. So then the risk is interpreted as 2.7 people per 1,000 over a seven-year time period. So next, we'll have a short in-video quiz so you can try calculating a risk yourself. This concludes our segment on risk, which included both the definition, showed you some calculations, and also an example of how, to, how risk is used in the population.